Star Citizen's letter from the chairman said that we are on the road to Alpha 4.0, but what does that mean? We had a huge and in-depth look at the plans for some of the most important tech and features for Star Citizen from Chris Roberts, and I want to highlight and summarize the massive changes that are coming to the game for 2022. They flipped everything upside down, they've changed everything for this year. Alpha 3.18 is actually absorbing another major patch, sort of, at least the time frame for it, and Alpha 4.0 4.0 might be previewed at the end of the year. This is going to make a load of people incredibly happy and some very angry and let's talk about it. Let's take a look at what Chris had to say. The road to 4.0. This year there are three huge technology initiatives that will fundamentally change the experience and immersion in Star Citizen. Persistent Entity Streaming, the Gen 12 Renderer and Server Meshing. Persistent Entity Streaming, PEZ, allows them to record the state of every dynamic object in-game, irrelevant of whether it's owned or held by a player. That means you could drop a gun or med pen in a forested area on Microtech and return several days later after logging out to find that item still there, assuming someone didn't grab it or it's exploded or got blown away or whatever. And Star Citizen is at a massive scale, so that's a lot of things to be tracked. iCache had to be reworked, so this was the old system. They had realized it wasn't going to be low enough latency at the scale they needed it to be at, so they pivoted towards Entity Graph and the Replication Layer as a solution. The Replication Layer is a scalable data cache that tracks the state of all dynamic objects in the universe, runs in the cloud, and then communicates with the cloud-based graph database, which they call Entity Graph. These are required for PES. They're required for the persistent entity streaming to exist and work in-game. Chris said, I am happy to report after 16 months of extremely focused work by 18 engineers, three dedicated QA, and four producers spread around the CIG and Turbulent Studios, who are managing the back-end database in the cloud and its related services that the team were able to demonstrate persistent entity streaming working last week in our weekly internal persistent universe update meeting. They placed various ships and cans little items around uh, a server on the moon of Aberdeen and then killed that server, bam, and then relaunched and traveled back to Aberdeen. The items and ships were still there. This is a huge milestone for the deck, being able to literally track all of that stuff. It's to be there and persist after a server effectively crashing or being turned off and that it's able to save that to a database it's able to recall that is fantastic and allows you to do a huge amount more in star citizen the plan is to have the first working version of persistent streaming as part of the 3.18 ptu's testing phase and then they're going to dial it in a bit more and then release it with 3.18 Full persistency and the entity graph will replace the older P cache. This will also have streaming logic controlled by the network replication layer. Later in the year, they want to have dedicated game server nodes split from the replication layer, allowing multiple servers to be simulated and actually have a server mesh. At the end of the year, they hope to have a server meshing prototype on the PTU in some form. Beyond 2022, they want to continue to iterate on server meshing, and the second release, um, assumedly in 2023, will allow for a static mesh, a replication layer, hybrid service, and four dedicated game servers to simulate the Stanton and Pyro systems. After this, they will start working on server dynamic meshing and replication layer v2, separating the replication layer into a horizontal scalable service. This will allow the dedicated game server nodes to dynamically scale up and down, splitting the sim into focused server run zones as needed. They are anticipating Alpha 3.18 to require a much longer time in the Evocati and PTU phases though. This is due to the huge changes that persistent streaming makes to the game. Chris says his guess is it may be as long as three months in PTU, but it's hard to predict. Well, what does that mean though? Because if it's three months in PTU and it hasn't gone to PTU yet, what, what, what does that mean? When, when are we getting 3.18? Well, we'll come to that in a second. As it did not make much sense to engineer the revamped physical cargo system and salvage for the old system, these two features have been engineered for full persistence. So, those wrecks of the ships that you destroy will stick around so you can salvage them later. And this will arrive with 3.18. So they're not delaying salvage, they're not delaying uh, the cargo system, at least not from the 3.18 patch. So, because of 3.18 being in a very long PTU phase, they do still want to engage players. So, they are planning to release a content-rich 
Alpha 3.17.2 patch with known stable code, new missions, new locations, and other gameplay in late June. So that's basically taking the place of where uh, we would have expected to see the 3.18 patch. So they're going, bam, uh, a mini patch there. The vast majority of players, hundreds of thousands of them in fact, are here to simply play on live. And for them, we want to keep giving them engaging new gameplay and adventures to enjoy simultaneously while we test 3.18 at scale on the PTU. The goal will then be to get two to three months of testing on 3.18 in the PTU for an Alpha 3.18 release to go to live in late Q3 of this year. So probably September time, though it's possible that they sort of save this for maybe um, CitizenCon or something like that. Chris continues, I know many of you have been waiting for Salvage, Fiskars Cargo and Persistent Entity Streaming for a long time and I'm excited to see us in the home stretch to finally bring it to you. I think 3.18 will be an amazing update that is an even bigger game changer than 3.15 was but we want to make sure we give it proper time to test so we can deliver it to you at the best quality possible. Alongside our persistent streaming work, the engine and graphic teams have been making great progress on the second big technical initiative we've been working on the past two years, a complete replacement of our graphics engine with what we call Gen 12, which is a multi-threaded and much more efficient approach to rendering, which gets the most out of modern graphics APIs like Vulkan. This allows us to utilize the modern graphics power of PCs more effectively and not tie up the main game update loop with waiting around for draw call submissions and the like. We are looking at getting the bulk of this functionality in for the live release of 3.18 with the release of Vulkan functionality a little later, but hopefully by the end of the year. As you might have guessed, we will approach server meshing in much the same way as we're rolling out persistent entity streaming. Star Citizen Alpha 4.0 will be a truly new era in Star Citizen. It will mean our final tech building block server meshing will have been delivered. The first implementation will be what we call static server meshing, SSM, where each server is given a defined area to simulate, but as soon as SSM is stable, we will move towards dynamic server meshing with subsequent releases, which will allow for much more scalability as the servers will not be bound by location, but instead will be distributed by load, allowing for much better simulation performance in any given area of the universe. With 4.0, we will get our second star system, Pyro, and we'll begin the process of adding more content, gameplay, and polish to get us to beta. For all of us at CIG, server meshing and 4.0 represent taking the next big leap to populating the verse with the promise of content and gameplay that will turn Star Citizen into a rich living universe that exceeds the promise we set before us those many years ago. Our current goal is to introduce server meshing and 4.0 as an early technical preview to Eva Carty testers in the PTU at the end of Q4 this year, allowing our most ardent players to help start testing server meshing so we can refine and polish it for release. But this is heavily conditioned on how well and easy the persistent entity streaming rollout goes. So be warned, this has a high chance of slipping into Q1 of next year. Once server meshing starts to see real world testing with thousands of players in the PTU, we will get a better idea of how much time it will need to cook in the PTU before it can make its way to live. We are aiming for the end of Q1 2023. But again, we will not know with confidence until it hits testing. This special 2022 release cadence will not be particularly unusual to most players. If you pull back and look at it in a broad sense, we will still have four big end of quarter releases, as well as two big mid quarter releases for Fleet Week in May and the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo in November. And by year's end, players will be able to enjoy persistent streaming, salvage, Cargo Refactor and Bounty Hunter version 2 gameplay on live. Meanwhile, those who are following our development closest and providing the critical service of helping test our biggest tech will be able to get their hands on persistent streaming and server meshing this year as we put them into testing in 3.18 and 4.0 in the PTU during the summer and winter respectively. Sometimes the wait can be hardest when we are closest to the finish line, but this year I am so excited to share our release plans for our key tech building blocks, and I know many of you cannot wait to jump into the PTU and start testing later this year. This 
was an amazing amount of information from Chris. I just wish we could have had this over the last six months in smaller amounts, smaller doses, just going, well, actually, this is the plan, this is where we're going, bam, bam, bam. But it looks like we might be only getting two or three major patches this year. It's a bit, it's a bit confusing. So we know, that obviously, we've had 3.17. 3.18 looks like it's taking the place of the Q2 and Q3 patches, so it's going to be released uh, at the end of Q3. Now, we've got that um, Meaty 3.17.2 patch. It's going to be released at the end of Q2, so yeah, cool. It's just a smaller patch. Now, can Cloud Imperium really do what they say here and have this massive milestone with 3.18 in our hands by the end of the year, and potentially even that prototype for server meshing and 4.0 in Eva Carty's hands? But it does sound to me that that sort of work on 4.0 after 3.18 might be replacing what we would have had for a 3.19 patch. Do you see what I mean? So at the end of December, are we getting 3.19? It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like we might be getting a very early version of 4.0 or um, that sort of thing to test. And maybe we'll get a 3.18.1 or 0.2 patch um, with a bit of um, content in there. But it looks like Cloud and Pyram are finally going, we need server meshing in the game now. Let's focus on getting that ASAP in game. It would be great to actually see a 4.0 build live Q1 2023 and that looks to be the sort of goal there. I really want Star Citizen to hit a series of wins over the next few months but the fact um, that this is being talked about and that's the plan and the focus is yeah look 3.18 then 4.0 serve meshing full persistence all this super important tech to make Star Citizen an actual MMO that leaves me very hopeful. Server meshing is coming and there are a massive amount of make or break points with this tech and Star Citizen 4.0 on the horizon. This wasn't even the full letter from the chairman. And I'm going to be breaking down the other parts and topics in a separate video. But what do you think? Will Cloud Imperium be able to hit a massive win with 3.18? Will we see server meshing potentially in our hands at the end of this year or early next year with 4.0 and Pyro coming relatively soon? At least in the Star Citizen timeline. Did you like what Chris Roberts was saying there with the road to 4.0? Do you think they'll be able to meet all of those sort of goals? Do you think the development is far too slow? Do you think actually this could open the floodgates now when we get uh, 4.0 and server meshing? Or do you think it's going to be something that's slowly delayed again and again and again and it gets pushed into 2024? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I saw NordVPN once. I was in a forest late at night. I'd got lost and then I heard it and an earthly sound as if the wind was talking to me. NordVPN.com slash board gamer. Then I saw him run at me. He was so free, almost as if he could be anywhere in the world. America, France, Australia. He was so secure, protected in layers of encryption that I could not even fathom. So majestic. Well, I heard that NordVPN was as big as a bear and could kick your head off. I've also heard that, which is why, just in case, I go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer to appease the beast. You can find links to that down below. If you're looking for a new god, why not try NordVPN? Every month we have a ship giveaway, this time for May to celebrate Star Citizen Alpha 3.17's release. We're giving away three prizes to three separate winners. An Origin 100i Luxury Starter Ship, a Consolidated Outland Nomad Versatile Freighter, and an Aegis Avenger Titan Multi-Role Ship. They all come with lifetime insurance and access to play Star Citizen. To be in for a chance of winning one of those three prizes, just comment on any of my videos made during May. More details in the description below. Thank you so much to everyone that watches, shares, comments, and likes my videos. It really does help the channel grow. Be sure to subscribe for more content. If you would like to go to the extra mile in supporting the channel, there is Patreon links below. There's a join button under my videos as well on YouTube that makes you a highly elite channel member with some extra perks and exclusive content. There's also the thanks button, which straight up gives us money, and you can leave a highlighted comment. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great May 2022.